because mm. it, it kind of once you're out of the headspace of thinking about philosophy and all those kind of things, you, you don't want to focus on anything else because you don't want to stop your your progress in it. And so I, I progressed through stages and I, I looked online and I found this, you know, concept called nihilism, which as soon as I saw it, it just completely just matched exactly how I felt and what I believed, which is the most important thing. Hello people. Welcome to the Dark Realm. Hello everybody, welcome to another video. Crazy t-shirt Tom here, ready to talk to you about another topic that's been on my mind. Actually, to be honest, it's been on my mind for a long time now. And it's a video that I've always really been wanting to do. Um, but I wasn't sure it fit in with a lot of the things that I've been talking about recently, about mental health and autism, all that kind of stuff. But it's more on the philosophical side. I wouldn't say spiritual because I hate that word and I think it's overused, but I would definitely call it philosophical. So today I am talking about nihilism. I'm a nihilist, which maybe doesn't really come across a lot in my videos. To be honest, a lot of my depression and mental health and stuff didn't really come across in a lot of videos apart from some that I did like a while ago and one of those intense ones that I've posted in the past. But anyway, this is a video all about how I am a nihilist. I'm going to give you a bit of a background of what it is, and I'm also going to enlighten you, a little link there, um, on my personal journey with developing this, uh, not condition, this mindset that's um, been a very integral part of my life for a long time and it has very large effects on my daily life and my interaction with people and it's a very important thing for me to talk about and I hope it'll be interesting for you guys to learn a bit about it. So yeah, at the risk of conforming to YouTube entrances, let's get on with the video. So I had a little Google search uh, about nihilism just to enlighten my own knowledge on the facts. Nihilism in terms of philosophy is the belief that life is meaningless, um, happy, happy. But there are other definitions for it, and it's um, usually to do with throwing out uh, religious and um, general society views on life and people and all that kind of meaning for existence and that kind of stuff. So nihilism, um, bit of an under misunderstood uh, philosophy. It's very often linked in with depression. And, it, you know, most nihilists do develop depression, either beforehand or because of their nihilism they develop depression, but it is two separate things. Depression is a mental health condition. Nihilism is a philosophical standpoint or a view on life. Um, just to get that out of the way quickly. It's not me being depressed, it's my actual views on life and the core values that I hold deep to me. It's very important to me. That's Isaac. He got his um, got us to pick up his Chinese because he tried to coordinate it with him coming home, but he's it's downstairs in the kitchen. Okay, I told him that I'd take a spoonful every five minutes that he's away. Um, I'm I'm too nice to do that. Then anyway, back to the depressing enlightenment of life. Nihilism is my philosophical standpoint, and I'm just going to take you through my development through becoming nihilistic and um, all that kind of stuff. So, I've been depressed for a long time and there's a lot of triggers that cause people to delve into the philosophical realm. It's usually either to do with um, use of psychedelic drugs that some people do and depression, some kind of long-standing illness that they have, death of a family member, um, or even just general curiosity and philosophy and um, all its makings. So for me, it started about two years ago, maybe a bit before that. All my life as an autistic person, I, I like to understand things logically. That's the only way that I can understand things. I don't understand things by emotions. They don't count as understanding for me if I understand something emotionally, um, which I usually don't. 
And so logic is a very big part of the reason why I take nihilism so seriously in myself. I, I keep saying the word, it sounds a bit too exaggerated and over the top. Uh, but the thing is, is, it is quite over the top and um, it's not very common as well. There's, there's a very small percentage of people who are nihilists. The whole, there's no meaning of life thing gets thrown about flippantly in these, these times and days and stuff. And the difference between knowing that, you know, there's a possibility that there's no meaning of life and actually having it in your core and believing that is two very different things. And it, it, it very much impacts whether you'd be classified as being a nihilist or not. It's not some weird club or anything. It's not good to be a nihilist. It's not bad to be a nihilist. You know, it's just, it's just how you view the world. There's viewing the world in a negative way, which is, you know, everything's rubbish and all that kind of stuff, but um, nihilism comes from a very deep perspective that takes a long time to reach. Um, so for me, uh, I started off being quite depressed. I went through a really bad phase in my second year um, where I couldn't, I couldn't work. Um, I was, I was research, researching a lot into science, like the makeup of reality, and um, as, as an autistic person I've, I've had a lot of strange experience with reality. I, I try and con like um, solidify my logic behind the experiences that I've had. Uh, so for example, I experience emotions in different days as different realities. It sounds all psychotic, but I'm, I've, I've never had a I've been to have a psycho, like a psychosis diagnosis. <laughs> I was trying to be, I was trying to be serious there, but <laughs> I did not mean to do that. But yeah, I've been through the whole psychosis thing and all that, but they don't really classify anything that's not hallucinations as psychosis and stuff like that. So you can assume that I am generally mentally clear. Um, I sort of disagree with that. So after I went through this really bad, um, it was a combination of a breakup and I basically, I had very uh, like prominent cycles of depression and anxiety that uh, occurred throughout my life. Just, it would happen for maybe three or four months, maybe to up to six or eight months like it did in second year. It was the whole of second year at university. And it can, it can take an impact on you. And especially when you, you don't have anything to make you happy. Um, and when, you, when all of your, you know, logic and stuff isn't, isn't sound and you can't really get a, grips on, get a grip on things like I like to do to make me grounded and understand things and be happy in myself. Um, looking into philosophy is, was some of my, one of my escapes and it was one of my interests as well. I was extremely interested in philosophy particularly in writing my own stuff. Um, I didn't, I, I looked a little bit online. I read, looked at some like science documentaries and um, obviously I've got a background in science, so I'm aware of evolution and all that kind of thing. Uh, in my times making these notes, I went into a very like, intense um, giving up experience. Uh, when I say giving up, I'm not saying like I didn't, you know, I, di I didn't see the meaning in anything anymore and I, I didn't like anything. Not in that sense. It was, I spent a good, the good part of a month isolating myself in my room. Because um, I went through a existential crisis, which is, you can look it up, it's, it's when the whole, all of your beliefs and fabric and the reality and stuff just like dissolves for you. I'm not trying to make this some weird spiritual thing. I'm trying not to use these words. I feel like they're overused and they're, they're not used in the right way. But that was the, this, the experience that I had. So all my friends just turned into pieces of walking meat. You know, my, my ambitions dissolved into the ether. Um, I didn't see any point in living anymore and I didn't see any point in interacting with life anymore, so I just spent extending amount of times on my own, just 
panic attacks and all day and being put on meds to keep them under control and you know having a friend to like talk to then that's it and just eating sleeping that's kind of that was what my life was for a good good part of a month and um it didn't stop there i did get my grit together i did get myself together and i started to do stuff i started to work on my youtube channel and started to you know try to connect with people make friends and started to be more positive on the whole philosophy thing that I wouldn't classify myself as a nihilist at that point, but it definitely was one of the existential crises. I had one previously to that when I was younger, um, many to be honest, I think, uh, where, you know, a psychologist, they can't really do anything when a patient is just completely just out of it in terms of accepting anything that they say, because, you know, how do you accept something from you know, something that you don't value, not value, but that sounds horrible, but it's kind of like, you know, the meaning of things, you know, the, re the true meaning behind anything and everything that someone tries to tell you to make you feel better about it. It's the existential crisis. It, it sort of goes past your radar because you've already thought of that because obviously you've, you've done, I've done a lot of work into it. So I've already thought of the suggestions. And any suggestions that I made that were made were just completely obliterated by my way of thinking. And as I went to Thailand, I started to work on myself a lot more. Um, I started making a lot of developments and friends in uh, my personality and working on my confidence, um, my ability to talk and all those kind of good things. And I still went through another one where I spent an extended amount of time. I, I did still function. I didn't function very well. I was eating a lot. I was staying on my own a lot. And I was very actively trying to isolate myself. I don't know why. Because um, it, it kind of, once you're out of the headspace of thinking about philosophy and all those kind of things, you, you don't want to focus on anything else because you don't want to stop you you progress in it. And so I, I progressed through stages and I, I looked online and I found this, you know, concept called nihilism, which as soon as I saw it, just completely just matched exactly how I felt and what I believed, which is the most important thing. Once I found about it, I was quite relieved. I felt more not, I felt, I felt not as alone um, when I found out that you know, other people think like this and there's philosophers who that date back in history who just completely lost the plot and because of these these concepts and I remember this this one philosopher that I, I, I read about and he, he he spent the rest of his life drinking because he, he thought that everyone around him was either a dream or a simulation or whatever you want to call it. And that was that was a case of the whole diving deep into philosophy, which is, is quite a dangerous thing to do. It's really difficult. I know I know I might be sort of darting around the subject quite a lot, but it's it's really difficult to communicate it without people thinking that you're exaggerating or being intense or just being silly or just being depressed and not realizing that mm -hmm. that's that's that. But um I can I can tell you honestly that that is how I think. Um, and it can have a lot of negative impacts on your life, um, which is one of the reasons why I feel so bad about talking to it, talking about it openly, because I don't want anybody to read into it. I don't want people to become like me. It's not the, the best outlook on life. You know, a lot of nihilists, they get into, there's a very high incidence of um, addictive substance abuse, alcohol, cigarettes, all those kind of things and I kind of dip in and out of addictive substances quite a lot because of my I get on paths of feeling good and stuff and I and ignore it which is a, a big part of it because although it is core to you the only way that you can really escape from doing nothing and wallowing in your own misery or enlightenment if you want to call it that um, and just 
not doing anything with your life. And that's the only way that you can do it is by pretending and pretending so much that you forget that you're pretending and then you go about your daily life and then only to be reminded of it once again. And then it happens like that. The cycles of getting out of it and then going back in and then making even more philosophical progress, if you want to call it progress, learning about new stuff and it, it solidifies your views more until it becomes an integral part of yourself and you can't escape it anymore. Um, I'm not going to lie, I don't feel bad about being an analyst. I, I like it, it's when I set out my philosophical journey, I don't like using that word either. I'm trying not to use these bloody words, but they're so hard not to use. Most people call it like spiritual journey, but I think it's, as I said before, it's, it, it detracts from, you know, real like philosophical meaning and stuff when you, when you start adding in this whole spiritual side to it and stuff. It's um, basically like a religion, which is why I try and segregate myself from my nihilism from the spiritual community. Well, once it's a part of your, your personality and it's, it's there to stick, it can be very difficult. You can get a lot of people who are very critical of your way of thinking if they'll ask you, you know, if you'll mention it, if you mention it on any off chance or usually because, you know, they question your your views on life and why you do stuff, um, usually to do with some kind of sadness or depression or negative outlook on life and it's hard not to just tell them about this thing that's like just always there for you and it's just such a big part of your life and when you try and talk about it with people um it can it can you can it can get like intense so it can be too intense for people and it can bring down the mood which is a which is a bad thing and it's it's a very difficult thing because you want to be able to communicate with people who are like-minded and want to be able to share your emotions and thoughts on life. But if you do, then it's going to make everyone worse, which is it's hard, it's hard to talk about it. There is a lot that I want to say about nihilism. I know this is just one of the videos that I'll be putting out about it. There's a lot of videos in the bank that I'm um, putting on, like out on my notes page and stuff. That's all ready to to go out talking about the different aspects of nihilism. But obviously, when I get talking, it's very hard for me to stop. So I'm gonna have to try and limit the amount that I say in each video, just for the purpose of structuring it out. But there are positives to nihilism, and I will be going over those positives as well. I don't, I'm not some depressed wreck. I'm not some. I'm not even negative, which is you know you in your mind. It's like how how can you know it not be negative if there's no meaning to life? It's um, it's it's relative positivity that I have. Um, the positivity that I have is you know um, even though there's no meaning to life, you can make your own meaning, and that's one of the one of the core reasons why. I believe that it's not to do with depression and it can be very highly linked to it though, you know. Anyway, that is the end of the video. If you want to know more about nihilism, if you don't want to know about it, if you think I'm exaggerating or being silly or going too far off the plot, just let me know. Um, I'll probably put them out anyway because it's, it's very cathartic for me to talk about it, but you can just ignore them if you want. Um, you guys are my main priority and I want to make videos that you want to watch and I want to make videos that you can relate to and find interesting, all those kind of things. Um, so that's that's the main the main goal here. Um, but also to you know tell you about what it's like for for a, a very minority of people like myself who are nihilists. It's very important and I hope to share more about it in future videos. And um, Keep trying not to do that like and subscribe bit at the end, but you can if you want to. You can give me a little thumbs up and a sub and a comment. Shameless, aren't I? Absolutely shameless. Anyway, I love you guys. I've had such positive comments and likes and just the sheer amount of views that I get in such a small amount of time. And I know it's you guys 
the ones who are watching my stuff properly and not just like watching one and subscribing and forgetting about me. It's you guys are the ones who are diligent and you, you, I don't know if diligent is the right word, if you, you, you're loyal. I don't want to say loyal, that sounds weird. But you, you I really appreciate you. Um, especially you guys. I appreciate everybody watching my videos, but especially you guys who just watch my stuff. Um, I really appreciate it. And, you know, you can always reach out to me and talk to me. I love it. I love it when, when people comment. No one's going to think weird of you for commenting on it. I'm going to be really happy. You're going to feel happy because you get to talk to Thomas Henley. Um, nah, nah, I don't know. Forget it. <laughs> <sighs> but yeah, I really appreciate it. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in another depressing video in the future. Or not a depressing video. Maybe I'll do something about autism and sex. Tell me what you think. I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.